Honda's K-Series engine doesn't need an introduction. This engine can be found in cars as early as the year of 2000 in a Civic Si, in an Accord, an Element, the Odyssey, and countless other vehicles, and also vehicles found in Acura's lineup, from the RSX, the TSX, the CSX, and even the NSX. Well, no, I lied about the NSX part, but this engine is honestly that good that it has been swapped into the NSX and it's made the car even better. These engines have proved that you don't need to have a fancy, expensive engine to have a great time and be awesome at the racetrack. These things are reliable, they're cheap, they're easy to build, and the aftermarket support for them is amazing. Now, not all of the K-Series engines are the same. Some of them are turbocharged, where some of them are left naturally aspirated. Some of them have VTEC on the intake, where some of them have it on both the intake and exhaust. They can be found in 2 liter, 2.3 liter, and even 2.4 liter configurations. They're extremely capable, and you can even buy an entire engine for a couple hundred bucks. In this video today, I'm gonna be going over the main differences between the K24A engine and the K24Z. So let's begin with breaking down the name. The Honda K-Series is an inline-four, four-stroke engine that was introduced in the 2001 Honda Civic. Its engine code was designated as the K20, which means it's a two-liter K-Series motor. Now, the K24 that we have here is also an inline-four, four-stroke Honda engine. However, its displacement is 2.4 liters. Furthermore, the K24A that you see here and the K24Z are very similar. However, there are some very distinct differences between the two. The K24A engines were some of the earlier engines found in the 2000s, where the K24Z engines were found in vehicles after 2007. So this video I'm hoping is going to help you guys out if you guys eventually want to build a K24. Now, depending on what kind of setup you want to use, so like depending on which head you want to use which, with which block, that will greatly differ uh, depending on what car you have. So because I have a 2009 Honda Accord and it has an R40 engine block and engine in it, I'm going to be doing something different than let's say someone else that has, let's say a 2002 uh, Acura RSX or something like that. So keep in mind, this is going to differ from every car. However, the part Parts themselves are not going to change. What you're essentially looking for is the top end from the Honda K20s or K24s that flowed very well. So back in the early 2000s, the K20, the Type R, the Civic Si, those both had very well built cylinder heads. Those cylinder heads could allow the two liter engine to make more than 200 horsepower. Now, out of my K24, which is a larger displacement, it can't even make that power because the cylinder head isn't as refined. So let me show you what the difference is between these and hopefully this will help you decide what route you want to go, especially if you want to go NA versus boost. So let's get right into it. Getting started right here, we have two different engine blocks. The one you guys see here on the left, this is a K24A2. This came out of an Acura TSX. The engine that you see right here also came out of an Acura TSX. However, this came out of a newer one. This is a 2009 block. So this here is an R40 block, and that can be found on the actual engine in many places. So if we take a look on the back side of the cylinder head, so this is an R40-1. There's many different variations between these engines. The other Acura engine on the back side, if we check in the same spot, you can see that it doesn't say R40. This is an RAA block and this is a second revision of it. So consider this the model of K24 that you are buying. So for my build, the reason why I am choosing to use this block right here is because this K24Z3 is the same bottom end that I have in my Honda. So I know that the motor mounts, I know that the oil filter housing, I know that everything in here is going to bolt up just like my block. Now what I want to do is I want to use this 2.4 liter displacement block with the upgraded head. So this bottom end is very similar, however there's a lot of small differences. This block is different from this one. Now if you just quickly look at it, you can see you've got the coolant spot over here, same thing found on this engine, but these do not bolt up in the same orientation. On the back of the R40 block, you can see that down here, there's only a couple, a couple different holes where bolts go through, okay? So here's the R40. If we switch to the other engine, you can see there's more. So this one here is different. That there is for a different engine mount. There, the mounting and everything back here is similar. However, it's not the same. Disregarding the engine mount locations, the main reason why you can't necessarily use this block inside a vehicle that came with this engine is because of the crank sensor. So taking a look at the RAA block, 
If you look at the front side of the engine with the timing cover removed, you'll be able to see that there is a tone ring. Now this tone ring that you see right here is the crank position sensor. So you can see that there's 12 little teeth on here and this tells the engine or tells the ECU where the crankshaft is in relation to everything else. So it will be able to tell you all that information. Now the sensor itself is also going to be on this side of the block. Now that differs from the other engine. So if we take a look quickly at the lower part of the timing cover, you can see that there's an opening right here for where the, the crankshaft position sensor inserts. On the R40 timing cover, you can see that there isn't that port there. So that right there differs greatly. Now what's cool, or let's say interesting, is that the crank position sensor isn't even found on the same side of the block on this engine. So if you were to go ahead and remove the flywheel or your flex plate on this engine here, you would find that the tone ring, which is a 60 tooth tone ring and sensor are going to be found on this side. Let's now talk about the cylinder heads. Now the easiest way to determine if this is from an R40 head or not, the ports for the intake, you can see they're all separate. Now if you move to the back side, there's one large collector port. All the airflow and everything is coming from each one of the combustion chambers and it all goes into one port. The K24A engine right here from the Acura TSX, you can see has four individual intake ports. You can see it also has four individual exhaust ports. So this is unique to the A design. So the K24A, this here flows better and is more efficient than the single port design. The reason why Honda needs that four port design, it's because of the internals that are found inside the cylinder head. So if we remove the valve cover, you'll be able to see that this engine here has VTEC found on the intake and exhaust side. Long story short, VTEC just allows the cylinder head to open up the valves a little bit more and allow more air in. That is essentially what it does. Now that function can be found on the intake and exhaust side. That is denoted by the three lobe cam or the single lobe cam found on the camshafts. Now this valve train assembly is what is found inside the R40 cylinder head. So you can see that this here has one, two, three lobes found on the intake cam. So normally the engine runs on the lower of the two cams. And then when VTEC is engaged, this third rocker is actuated and you get the valve profile of this cam. So that is what VTEC is in essence. Now, not all K-series engines have the same VTEC. So this intake you can see here has the one, two, three cam lobes. On the exhaust, you can see that there's only one of them found. Now, this design here isn't going to flow as well as this. So what we essentially want is a cylinder head that has a good four port design, intake and exhaust, that also has VTEC one, two, three on the intake and exhaust. If we go one step further and take a look at the sprockets for the intake and exhaust camshafts, you can see that this here is a really bulky unit. This here is a regular cog. So this is just plain metal. This allows the cam to face forward and backwards. What that means is that you get extra power with this large sprocket. So because this has cam phasing on the intake, you're gonna get a little bit more power. Now, if you have an engine that has cam phasing for the intake and exhaust side, that is even better. You get efficiency and you get power whenever you desire. This cylinder head, you can see, has two different cams, both intake and exhaust, and they both have the larger sprockets. So we have the cam phasing for both the intake and exhaust camshafts. We can take these things off and we can further inspect the cylinder head to find even more goodies. So this cylinder head here has the VTEC found on both the intake, one, two, three lobes for each side, and also three for the exhaust, one, two, three. So this means that we can utilize both extra variable cam phasing, variable valve lift, which is essentially VTEC, and because we have the larger ports for both the intake and exhaust side, we can flow more air. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, Milan, why aren't you just using the K24A2 top end, which is the cylinder head, and the bottom end, which is the block, together inside your cord for this build? Well, the reason is because I have a Z engine in my car stock, it's easier to use that bottom end than using a different A bottom end to do this process. So if any of the K20A2 or K24A2 cylinder heads that have the variable cam phasing and VTEC for the intake and exhaust, those are the cylinder heads that you want to get this job done. Now, if you're going from the K24A2 head and a K24Z bottom end, there's going to be a couple modifications that you're gonna to need to do to get all of this to work. Let me just show you one of them. So this here is the K24A block. Now, if you were to go ahead and install a cylinder head on here, for this engine, you would see that, well, all the ports line up as they should, okay? These all line up, everything looks good. So we can use the cylinder head for this engine, obviously with this engine. 
Now keep in mind, the cylinder head, which is the K24A2 head, will be going on here. We want both the ports on the block and the cylinder head to match up. So using the K24A2 cylinder head, you would have to use this head gasket. And if we line this up here, it works perfectly except for one spot, and that is found right here. So if you move the cylinder head out of the way a little bit, you'll be able to see that this port was actually straight like this, not on an angle like this. So what I did is I brought my engine block to my machine shop. They were able to weld up a little bit of area or a little bit of aluminum here. They decked the whole thing and I just need to go ahead and grind down a tiny bit more of it because I need to angle it so that it's facing this way so that the coolant port uh, from the cylinder head can match the head gasket and the block. So with that all matched up, I'll be able to use the K24A2 head on this R40 bottom end. When I go ahead and build my K24, I'm gonna be doing a naturally aspirated route. I don't wanna go with the complicated turbocharged setup because I've seen what that's like with my Mini Cooper. So I don't wanna deal with the turbo headaches. For now, at least, I wanna stay in A. I wanna see if I can make 300 wheel. I have a bunch of upgraded parts. I'm gonna be showing you guys essentially every step along the way. And I'm really excited to get you guys along with me for all this stuff. I'm gonna be going to my machine shop, I'm gonna be showing you guys the parts that I have, and I'm gonna be essentially doing the entire build in front of you guys. So I'm not gonna be hiding anything. What you guys see is what you get. So I'm starting off with a K24 R40 Z3 bottom end, and I'm using a K24 A2 cylinder head, but this is the third revision. You guys have guaranteed heard of the term a Frankenstein K24 build. That is a K20 top end with a K24 bottom end. The problem with that though, in my eyes at least, is the K20 is an 86 by 86 piston and stroke. The K24 is an 87 99. So technically you're gonna have a half millimeter ridge on the top of the combustion chamber if you use a K20 head on a K24 bottom end. I don't wanna run into that. I don't wanna deal with that kind of issue because that also creates detonation issues. So what I'm doing is K24 top, K24 bottom, mashing it together, and we're gonna make more power than the measly 190 horse that this R40 engine makes. If you guys wanna find the up-to-date parts list, you guys can find that in the description box. If you aren't following me on Instagram, you guys can do so by following me, it's at Millmast. Super easy, you guys are gonna stay up to date with all the stuff that I'm doing. If you guys aren't subscribed and you wanna see more of this stuff along the way, click the sub button. I'm gonna be working on my K24 in the meantime. I'm gonna be doing some work on my Z and also on my Mini. All that content's gonna be on there for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.